Your home is your castle. Whether you need a pro or just great advice, your home with Alex Guthrie. Welcome to another edition of Your Home with Alex Guthrie. It is a beautiful day. Great day to be alive. Every day is a gift. And I appreciate you spending some of your day with me. It's like sharing a little bit of your a little bit of your gift with me, and I sure do appreciate it. Hey, uh, check out our website, www.yourhomeshow.net. We'll be posting some upcoming shows and other things that we're doing. Also, if you're listening on the radio, um, check us out at Your Home with Alex Guthrie on Facebook Live, or you can go to alex at alexguthrie.net. You can catch us there. And uh, today, all day, we are going to have open phone lines, and we have a giveaway. It's a great gift. It's a $25 Home Depot gift card. And it's actually uh, a rebootable. So you can spend the money, and then you can go put more money on it and uh i'll send it anywhere in the country i see i've got a uh, my wife's nephew ted clarkson is on here and he's in i think new jersey or somewhere he's somewhere else he's not around here but hey buddy i'll mail it to you i've got a friend of mine on here that's in uh, i think in louisiana right there mike chapman hey buddy good to see you and my good friend marcia uh i can't say say your last name because it's got too many letters in it and prissy bankston's on here Pris, Prissy Bankston Mayor, I'm sorry, I remember you from high school. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on Facebook Live. And thanks, if even if you're not joining us on Facebook Live, you're listening on the radio, I'm so glad to have you. The number is 214-810-8255. If you have any questions, have anything you want to talk about, I'm here for you. And uh, we've got lots of lines and Lines are going to be open. Spokane, Washington, Ted says. Well, give us a call and ask a question. And, and man, I'll tell you what, uh, this card can go anywhere. There's a Home Depot. There's Randall Stewart. He's an old guy I know from a many, many years ago. We were young together. Uh, good to see you, Randy. Glad to see you're here on Facebook Live. Thanks for joining. I don't know where you are these days, but... Uh, Write, uh, send me a note on Facebook Live and let me know. We'll call you out. Uh, today's show, I've got a really interesting show today. We are going to have so much fun. My featured guest today is Megan Carol Edwards. She's with Ferguson Enterprises. We're going to talk about appliances and plumbing fixtures and all kinds of other things that come to mind while we're having our conversation. And Megan is quite the conversationalist and she knows her stuff. There's all kinds of uh, new inventions, new technologies, all kinds of cool stuff going on with appliances, things I can't keep up with, things most of us can't because technology is tying all these things together so fast. And uh, Megan is going to, you know, she's going to help us understand all that. She's going to be coming up in the second hour. And then it, it, uh, we're going to have a, in a minute, We're going to have a good friend of mine on, Phil Crone. He's going to be, we're going to, uh, he's going to be talking to us about some projects that the Dallas Builders Association is up to. And, um, and then in a little bit, we're going to have a, another good friend of ours, Chris Vaughn. He's going to come and talk to us about some foundation things we need to be talking about right now. Uh, we're in the middle of a drought and it's early. Uh, we haven't had nearly as much rain as we used, we're accustomed to having. We should have had a lot more rain this spring. We had showers. We had some soaking rains. We had, you know, kind of the, mon- we didn't even really have monsoony type things like we usually have. So we're already in our dry season. We're already in the 100 degree mark. Um, it's appearing like it's going to be a long, hot summer. So I wanted to uh, call Chris Vaughn and ask him to talk to us today about some preventative things to do with our foundations. Um, It's time to start watering them and taking care of them right now. 
take care of your foundation. Also, if you'll go to my YouTube channel, and it's Your Home Show uh, on YouTube, Your Home with Alex Guthrie on YouTube. Um, I posted a video last night uh, with my good friend Chris Miles, and we have a video showing root barriers for foundations. It's very interesting. He's building a house, and he's using root barriers. And I wanted to show that, uh, get that up. And while we have Chris uh, today, we're going to have a discussion about that because it's what happens when you have a drought and the ground starts getting dry around these trees, they start sending their roots up under your foundation. That's where a lot of moisture is. And they naturally gravitate towards the, the moisture. And they start drawing moisture out from under your foundation, creating problems. Um, I thought this was very interesting, and it's something that everybody should be aware of. So uh, that's going to be our show today. And so here on the hotline is not Phil Crone. <laughs> My Phil Brown tells me he didn't get him yet, so we won't worry about that. So the next, until we get him, let's do the green tip of the day. And the green tip is brought to you by Hargrave Foundation Repair, the original Hargrave Foundation, uh, the original Hargrave established in 1968 hargravefoundation.com. This time of year, lots of people want to build wood decks. So the question is, what kind of wood? Some woods are better than others. It is important that if your contractor is recommending an exotic wood from the rainforest or any wood, that it be FSC certified, and here's why. The Forest Stewardship Council sets standards for responsible forest management. A voluntary program, FSC, uses the power of the marketplace to protect forests for future generations. Some people feel the best way to prevent deforestation is to stop using forest products. In reality, people use forest products every day. For example, the average American uses nearly six trees worth of paper each year. So FSC harnesses market demand to ensure forests are responsibly managed because FSC is the gold standard in forest certification. It is the only system supported by groups such as WWF, Sierra Club, Greenpeace, Natural Resources Defense Council, and the National Wildlife Federation. Today, more than 380 million acres of forest are certified under FSC's system, including more than 150 million acres in the U.S. and Canada. Now, I, I, that, the reason that I, I, I actually looked that up and did that research myself, hello, Mary Morgan Peltier and Tommy Staley and Mary and Kevin Brookshire and John David Wells. Thanks for joining the show. We appreciate it on Facebook Live. Uh, the reason I brought that up is because the uh, reason I looked it up, wanted to talk about it, is I've had two or three people talk to me about doing screen porches and, and screened enclosures, and, and I always do this time of year. It's, it's not unusual at all that I get requests like that because we, you know, we normally have enough good weather that everybody's thinking, wow, if I could just sit outside and really enjoy it, we normally don't go right into this 100 degree weather and kind of get fooled by Mother Nature. And I, I've started having people asking me to build wood decks, which is a little bit of a departure from what I've been hearing in the last few years. So the last 10 or so years, we've been talking more about uh, stone patio type deck, solid surface, more, uh, a lot of people for a few years, we were doing pattern concrete. We're doing things other than wood. Um, even we weren't, we we're kind of going away even from the man-made wood products because they weren't very attractive and it took them a while to get to where they were dependable. And so people are asking me about wood 
Well, back in the day, we had really good, dependable wood that we could use. We had redwood and um, we had woods that uh, were, you know, we they were, they were affordable for one thing. They were plentiful. And we built lots of beautiful decks out of them. We were very good at it. But then they became uh, kind of scarce. And they became scarce because we, we over for we over uh harvested our forests we weren't very careful and, and responsible about it and so now we we've gone into the rainforest we've gone all over the world and we've cut down these beautiful trees and harvested uh harvested out these forests and it's not it hasn't been very pretty at all as we all know well fsc is an organization that has spent years and years um, sort of setting standards for the harvesting and and putting their stamp and, and getting people together on, on the right way to do things. And it's really important that we kind of, you know, keep the eye on keep our eye on the ball when we're doing this because there's such high demand. And right now it's super important. Now our woods right now are all farmed. You know, our, all of our building material, the wood in particular, is all farmed wood, and it's different. But when you're talking about doing decks, and I'm going to talk in a little bit about doing screen porches, um, you have to um, you have to really consider, for instance, redwood. I don't know if you can afford it. Fine but redwood comes out of California. Our redwood has been coming out of California. There may be some other places. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it's not real affordable, and it's also not always real uh, accessible. We don't have lots of it around. I can't always get my hands on it. So I prefer to do stone. I prefer a more of a uh, sustainable uh, type thing. So anyway, that's why I brought all that up. Um, so let's talk about screen porches. Screen porches are pretty interesting. I think of a screen porch now as a 12 month a year outdoor living room. I don't think of it as just something you hang out in when the weather is just nice in the fall and nice in the spring. It used to be that that's what they were kind of made for. But as we have, uh, as the weather's sort of changed with uh, global change, you know, the weather's changed globally and we, our houses have changed, our living styles have changed. We can build a porch now that is sort of a year round porch. And we do it with building materials and building practices. And so here's a few tips I wanted to touch on uh, that has to do with building a screen porch. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, and it's going to kind of contradict my last conversation, but it does happen. And this is if you have a wood floor, if you do have a deck. Now, you can, it doesn't have to be wood. I'm saying wood. It could be the artificial wood. Uh, but if it's not a concrete floor. You want to put screens underneath it. If you have an open air decking on the floor, put screens in there to keep bugs from coming up through it. That's pretty obvious. Um, you want to be careful if you're using any sort of treated wood. You probably don't want to use a treated wood. You don't want to use anything that's got a, a VOCs or is going to off gas inside that area. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk some more about screen porches. Maybe we'll be able to get Phil on the line. And uh, in the meantime, stay with us. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes. You're listening to Your Home with Alex Guthrie. Don't go away.
Alex Guthrie here for my friends at Total Air and Heat. Did you know a typical AC unit runs enough hours in a year equal to a car running 60,000 miles? Total Air and Heat recommends that you tune your system and have it safety checked every six months to ensure peak efficiency, proper operation, and increase the life of the system. Need a new air conditioning and heating system? No problem. Total Air and Heat can replace your equipment with the best equipment on the market today. Train! And you know it's hard to stop a train. So for the best heating and air conditioning contractors in North Dallas and Plano for the past 60 years, call my friends at Total Air and Heat, 972-881-0020. That's 972-881-0020 or visit them online at TotalAir.com. Total Air and Heat. 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas. Brought to you by the Spice and Tea Exchange at 319 South Main Street. In mid-November of 1845, settlers from Missouri, the Archibald Leonard family, B.J. and Hiram Crowley, Ambrose Foster, and the family of Judge Jacob Moorhead settled near Lonesome Dove. Two years later, the Lonesome Dove Baptist Church was established south of Judge Moorhead's place near Grapevine. I'm Nancy McBrayer for the Spice and Tea Exchange. We started in Fort Worth and just really loved the Grapevine area. We wanted to capture the folks that were from Dallas that came to the stockyards that said, oh, this is so far for us. And Grapevine is such a beautiful area. We decided that that was a perfect place for our second location. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to double www.grapevinetexas.gov. I'm Nancy McBrayer for the Spice and Tea Exchange. Step back in time. Visit historic Grapevine, Texas today. Some people think the only thing worse than calling the dentist is calling the foundation repairman. That's why I recommend Hargrave Foundation Repair. Cracks in the walls? Doors that won't close? Give the folks at Hargrave Foundation a call. Now, sometimes it's not the foundation at all. That's why you need an honest, proven company. You see, understanding the soils and weather is a must for a lifetime repair. Family owned and operated since 1968, Hargrave has seen it all. Hargrave Foundation Repair is fully licensed and insured, and their staff stays up to date on all the latest techniques and advances. So call one of the last independently owned foundation companies in North Texas and the exclusive installer of the Chance Helical Pier System. Call Hargrave Foundation Repair at 972-442-3415. That's 972-442-3415. Hargrave Foundation Repair, 972-442-3415. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We are live. Hey, give us a call. We got time to talk. Heck, I've got I got till one o'clock. Love to hear from you. 214. 810-8255. 810-8255. That's 214-810-8255. Give me a call. I'm gonna, I really want to give away. I really want to give away this Home Depot gift card. $25. You can recharge it after you use it. I've done everything for you, but buy whatever it is you want. I mean, come on. Give me a call. Ask me a question. See if you can stump the contractor. Shouldn't be too hard to do. It is Saturday. I try not to think too too complicated on Saturday. I try to keep it simple. You know, up until a few months ago, I was just thinking about fishing. But here I am thinking about contracting. Because I love you. We're talking about screen porches. So how do you make a screen porch? In this old hot place, usable during the summer, well, you can do it. Now, one thing that you have to think about with the screen porch is that the screen blocks moving air. So you have to create the moving air, obviously. So you want a fan, a ceiling fan, and that'll help a bunch, but it won't fix all the problems. Ceiling fans, of course, that's going to help a whole lot. But one of the things that you can do if you're building the porch is you can add radiant barrier in the ceiling. 
And radiant barrier, whether it's the, you use the decking on the roof, if you're building it from new, or whether you're adding radiant barrier, the foil on the bottom of the rafters, either way, if you get that radiant, the, the radiation, but essentially is what it is coming from the sun, if you get that out of there, you will drop the temperature of that thing so much, you won't believe it. It'll make it so much more comfortable. So radiant barrier is a great way to, to step one of making that screen porch work much better for you. We have been in houses, I have been in houses that I've done second floor additions on, and I've stood in the second floor without any windows in it in the middle of summer, and it was comfortable outside, and we were all laughing about it, and it was because we used radiant barrier on the roofing, roof decking, and that was the, how much it, uh, the effect it had on it. And this is over, this is years ago, and this is when we were just learning all about the effect that it had on buildings. And so now we've realized that we can do things like screen porches or enclosed rooms, uh, outside living areas and really have a, have a great effect on it. So try that uh, first, start at the top, get the radiance out of there. Of course, you've got to have screens and a ceiling fan. And then if you really want to make it a year round room, add a fireplace. You can either do a direct uh, gas fireplace or you can do a wood burning fireplace, which is much more romantic Everybody wants a little romance if they're going to sit out there and freeze. But, you, hey, you know, an enclosed porch in the wintertime when it's chilly outside and you've got your girlfriend or boyfriend with you, got a little fire going, that's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Everybody's got a little blanket on. It's okay. So you have a little fire, fire going out there. And the screens actually help reflect some of that heat in towards you. They help hold some of that heat in there. So everything helps in the winter and everything helps in the summer. So you're, you're building this thing and make it an outdoor year round room. You can do it. It works. Now I also looked into the uh, outdoor air conditioning and I got to tell you, don't do it. If, if it's that hot, <laughs> If you can't get it comfortable, just go inside. I mean, that kind of, for me, just ruins the whole point of having it. If you're, um, if you have the option, build the porch where the, where you get cross ventilation, where you get a natural, uh, breeze, obviously, and where you can get shading year, uh, during the day from trees. And if it's a new home and you're building a porch, do some plantings around it. Talk to your landscaper and, build, and, and plant some trees around it. Plan for this thing to get better as it ages. Uh, that'll, really, that'll really help as time goes on. You know, misting systems are great, but they're wet, and some people don't like them. But I'll tell you what, when it's 100 degrees outside, you, you probably will like it. It's hard not to. And so those are some of the pointers uh, for screen porches. I, I'm not a big fan of the mosquito misting systems. I know a lot of people, I mean, we're used to them now, and that's okay. But I just don't know that I want to sit on my enclosed outdoor living area breathing it. I just don't know. I'm not crazy about that whole idea. But maybe I'm wrong. Um, I will, and when we come back, we're going to have just a, a few minutes, and we're going to talk about, um, we're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about the electronics that you can put. You can put some electronics out there, TVs, stereos, you know, make it a real outdoor living area. But guys, I'm going to warn you, don't let it get too comfortable, or mama might change the locks while you're out there. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.
Hey travelers, do you want to save money on your next flight? Then pick up the phone and call. That's right, call. Because the best prices are not online. They're with SmartFares. See, SmartFares has special deals with the airlines. When they have unsold seats, they use SmartFares to fill them. So you get airline tickets at ridiculously low prices. Our prices are too low to publish online. With the extra money you'll save, you can book another trip or treat yourself to dinner or shopping. So stop searching all of those travel sites to find the lowest price on your next flight. Let one of our SmartFares expert travel agents find ridiculously low prices for you. Call SmartFares today and get the best price on your next flight. Guaranteed. Also, save up to 50% off business and first class tickets. 800-871-3291. 800-871-3291. Again, that's 800-871-3291. With the introduction of digital TV, it's more important than ever to make the best decisions when disposing of your old electronics and your televisions, too. Television and electronic recycling is easy and good for the environment. So if you can't reuse your old TV, then recycle it. Simply drop off your television along with any other electronics at a convenient electronic recycling event. Every first, second, and third Saturday, an event is held in Plano. Find resources and information to learn green, live green, and save a little green, all at the click of a mouse. LiveGreenInPlano.com. Getting ready to go here at the Pocono Raceway. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. A racetrack unlike any other. NASCAR's best drivers tangle. Blaney goes all the way onto the apron. Kyle Busch is going to crown him down there. On the tricky triangle. And here comes Kevin Harvick from the third spot. The Pocono 400. 23-year-old Ryan Blaney will score his first career win. Sunday at noon on the Motor Racing Network. Don't miss the Pocono 400 tomorrow at noon on 1160 AM KBDT. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. I just had a movie star drop in. Fan of white. Oh, Megan Carroll Edwards. How could I make that mistake? It's insane around here. Well, Megan got here a little early, so I just told her to just, you know, come on in. Because I need someone to, I need a really beautiful, fun, awesome person to tell our guest what we're getting. Now you got to hold it just right. Look at this. The project card. Tell them, Vanna, what we're giving away. Well, it looks like a Home Depot uh, reloadable project card. $25? There it is. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So it's a home a home Home Depot reloadable project car for twenty five dollars. Sounds great. So um can you just hold it up there and just like yeah, yeah there we go. Oh, duh, oh okay. If you guys don't call for this one, it's not my fault. Thank you, Vanna. You're so amazing. Absolutely. You're welcome. <laughs> Hey, we've got uh, Chris Vaughn on the hotline. What's going on, Mr. Vaughn? What do you say, young man? I thought you were going to say you had paid Pat Sajak on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Pat would be jealous of me right now, buddy. He ain't got nothing on me. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing, doing well, thank you. Sure are. Please welcome Chris Vaughn with Hargrave Foundation. And... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, we're kind of in a drought. We're more than really kind of in a drought. We're in a drought. And yeah, we really are. You know, it's interesting. I had heard on the radio it's the first time since 1950 that the Metroplex didn't have a recorded tornado touchdown in the Metroplex this year. Really? Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. They just hadn't been at my house. <laughs> uh, I understand. Uh, <laughs> um, and so um, right about now, I mean, it's really pretty early, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems to me it's really, really dry, really early. I, I've got to tell you, I sent a guy under a house uh, a couple of days ago. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, these people called me because they're having some problems with like loose tile in a bathroom floor. Then we sent him under the house to, to, to kind of figure out why. And of course we figured it out real quick, 
But one of the things that I found under there, it was obviously a pyramid beam, is that the ground was like loose sand. It was super, super dry, super dry. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot drier, you know, because normally under a house, there's some moisture in that soil this time sure. of year. You know, normally, normally we've had enough rain and enough moisture come up out of that soil, just, just migrating up out of the soil that it's kind of damp under a house. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. Sure would. Looked at a house yesterday, the same scenario. The outside of the house where the foundation, this was not a pyramid, beam, but he had a slab foundation, the dirt was already starting to pull away from his foundation by a couple of inches. And it was just getting just really, really dry. So what happens is when we get into a long-term drought and people don't really understand that what happens, it can be normal dry. And for uh, and now if you, if you look at a map, of, and I was looking actually at one yesterday, if you look at a map of the sort of uh, moisture condition, uh, the, there's moisture zones uh, that they have kind of mapped out of the whole country. And right. in our area, we are literally right on the line in Dallas. Uh, west of mm -hmm. us in Fort Worth is is considered arid. Or it's semi-arid. And Dallas is right on the line of semi-arid and humid. And and so we're, you know, it's kind of we're kind of in an odd area because of where we are. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you look at that, we should be we should be 20, I think 20 to 40 inches of rain per year. I, I don't know. What, mm -hmm. I don't know what we've had this year, but I know it's not that much. And uh, doesn't appear to be. No, no. And it's, so it's super dry. Now the moisture that supports a foundation or the, the dirt will stay moist up under the center of that foundation, even in a dry, normal dry part of the year. Right. That, that is correct. It usually wants to stay the same moisture content as well as the same temperature unless we get into uh, into a very dry season, a you know, drought, act of God type of thing. And trees can actually pull moisture out from underneath the house as mm -hmm. things start getting really dry on the outside. That's why it is important to have some type of watering program around the foundation to try to protect it. And so you start, what, what do you recommend for a watering program for a foundation? You know, it's interesting. I was looking at a house yesterday. He had he had a lot of dirt that was had, had kind of washed away from his perimeter foundation where you could see the bottom of it. He had a tree really close to the house. He didn't have any type of soaker hose, drip irrigation system around it. He had some movement, but it was very minor. And I told him, I said, I think you can control it with a maintenance issue. You add some more dirt around the foundation. You install a soaker hose 12 to 18 inches away from the foundation. And it's, it's interesting, Alex. It's, it's my understanding it's not the amount of water you give a foundation. It's the consistency of the program itself. You know, for instance, you know, every other day, 45 minutes to an hour on a, on a uh, soaker hose can really protect a home. It's not, you know, I think these engineers are not asking for you to spend $300 a month on a water bill. They just want you to be consistent with the program. We're trying to, what we're trying to do is have a consistent moisture content around the foundation. And that is correct. And what happens is if you, if you don't, you create a big dry spot or a big dry area that you, that's you, correct. And you can't play catch up. That's the problem that that's what happens to most houses that start to have an issue with a, a, a the soil drying out under or around, really it's around the beam of the foundation. So mm -hmm. um, most people think that a foundation, like a slab foundation, is just a big flat piece of concrete sitting on the dirt. Mm -hmm. And in reality, it's a series of beams that are dug uh, kind of like a grid system. Yeah, like right. if you took uh, your foundation and turned it upside down, it should look like a waffle. <laughs> I never thought of it like that, but that's very mm -hmm. good. It would. It would look just like a waffle. And so it's, it's really what you're trying to do is support those beams, right? That, that is correct. And that, because if you have a failure, that's where you, that's, 
where where the problem is. It's not the yeah. it's not in between them. It's under them. That's right. Like if, if you get a tree that's really close proximity to a home, you get into a dry situation, a drought. You're not doing any watering. The tree gets really thirsty. Guess where the moisture's at underneath the house? Exactly. So here comes the roots, and it'll cop the foundation due to the tree. That's exactly right. And guess what comes in with that? Termites. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Every, every, and you know, you don't want to. And people don't. <laughs> yeah, and people don't want to cut down trees either. You know, it's not you know because we have these you know these really hot summers, and you cut down trees, and it's not good. So you know, root barrier is an option as well. That's exactly right. Now, I, I put a video up yesterday on my uh, YouTube channel last night of uh, a, a friend of mine, the, a builder, Chris Miles, and he we're, he's putting in a root barrier system. Have you put any of these in? We typically don't do it. We try to, we try to stick with foundation repair. That's what we specialize in. Um, there's a lot of really highly qualified landscapers and, and arborists that can come in and, and install the barriers. Mm -hmm. And that way they know, they'll know to protect the tree because you don't want to come in and put a root barrier in and you really don't know what you're doing and you end up killing the tree and you spent money on a root barrier. So right. you want to make sure that the root barrier can, can work without having to kill the tree. So exactly. we used to call specialists in on that. Well, it was, it was, it was quite interesting. It's a, it's about a six or seven minute video. If anybody's uh, interested, if the, if you've got problems with your foundation and you've got trees near it, you might want to take a look at it. If you're having your foundation inspected and there's a suspicion that you've got an issue or they recommend a root barrier system, go look at this video. It's uh, your home with Alex Guthrie on, uh, uh, YouTube, and um, you will see a, a cool little demonstration. It's uh, short and sweet, and, and I've got, there's no pictures of me, so it's safe. It's just Chris, um, <laughs> and I will not apologize for him. <laughs> um, I understand. Uh, <laughs> but no, it is, a, it's a, it's an option if you don't want to cut down the tree. That way you can keep the aesthetics of the, of the tree, and also it provides, you know, shade around the home. So it's just a, a good way to consider it sometimes the tree is far enough away that it's not going to affect the foundation right right mm -hmm. and so now when you're looking at houses uh particularly new houses a, a lot of your work has to do with new homes that are being built that have failing foundation or foundation issues correct that that is correct we've looked at several new homes a lot of times, it they'll, they'll have they'll ex, they're experiencing movement. They're not experiencing what an engineer may classify as a major structural defect, but it's movement, you know, nonetheless. And so we what we try to do is we'll come into a home, draw the house up, shoot elevations on the home, and establish a benchmark. The foundation was probably never perfectly level to begin with, so we say, hey, look, here's a benchmark. Let's watch it. It's not that bad. It does show movement but let's not rush in and try to do something and hurt the home either. So we will give them some elevations. They hang on to it. We may say, let us come back in three months, or they may, you know, suggest, well, we're going to watch it right now, take some pictures of some cracks and come back and recheck it. And if it's needed, we'll tell them. But if it's relatively stable and it's cosmetic in nature, we'll tell them that too. We just try to be honest with people. We, mm -hmm. we don't want to sell them something they don't need. And so when we're talking about this, this, these drought, type problems this is this might be when you would kind of pick up on that and, that's correct and, and now i've been in a house uh because it was one i lived in where the owner <laughs> uh overwatered when the foundation <laughs> when the foundation, interesting interesting uh, well it was a uh, it was a very it was very interesting when the water mm -hmm. started coming up through the bathroom floor underneath the tub. oh wow because the uh, stupid owner turned the hose on in the crack next to the house. It kind of looked like the Grand Canyon. I was about to start uh, giving tours to the neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so he thought he would get smart. Well, actually, he, uh, he, uh, that would be me, the owner. He uh, put the hose in the crack <laughs> and forgot about it. I think maybe there was a football game. I'm not sure. And, oh, for heaven's uh, sake. And realized he had made a mistake when he went in the bathroom and there was water on the floor adjacent to oh, where the hose was coming up through under the tub. 
that's also not a good idea. <laughs> no, it is not. You know, and that's where I said earlier, it's the consistency of the program. You don't want to be sporadic with it. You don't want to just not water for several days and then turn around and take the water hose and, and put it in a crack and turn the water on. That's, that's not a, a good idea. A, I can tell that you That was a hard experience. lesson. I'm sure, yeah, that was probably a hard lesson to learn. I'm it? still being ridiculed about that. But I, I, you know, I deserved it. I deserved it. Um, and it wasn't a pure beam house. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I have no excuse. I have no excuse. Um, so uh, 15 minutes, usually if you have uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, a couple of times a day with a soaker hose about 12 inches away from the foundation, you uh, now I've had pe I've had people bury them and put them in there. I'm not really sure that you have to do that. Do you recommend that? No, you don't have to. But it's interesting that your drip irrigation is becoming more more popular uh, because you, they can kind of drop it into the ground and they're not having to uh, move it around to try to do yard work. And um, so that's a that's a real good option. You can go to the your local, you know, Home Depot, for instance, and, and buy the drip irrigation. You, you see it now becoming more and more prevalent. Um, drip irrigation. Versus, ver, versus, versus the old black soaker hose. Like if you, um, well, like if you walk up to a retail store and they'll have landscaping there. This right. is tan in color. And what a drip irrigation is, you know, soaker hose is porous from one end to the other. A drip irrigation is a solid line, and there's so often it has a drip nodule. Right. So right. when you turn it on, you get more even watering with a drip irrigation than you would a soaker hose. Either one is, is works really good. And will, will I, work, and but, but houses, people are turning towards. I've seen houses that have them on timers. You know, they have, they have sophisticated oh, fa yeah. foundation watering systems because there's certain areas. And we have different soil conditions all over and if you have a can you stay with us past this break and talk to us about sure. the soil different soil conditions we have in our area because that i think that's really critical to problems people have with their foundations that they may not really realize that we have soils that some of it absorbs water some of it leaches water some of it it's just like living in the desert we're going to take a quick yeah. break, and when we come back, we're going to continue our discussion with Chris Vaughn from Hargrave Foundation and Vanna. Uh, sorry, Megan is going to try and give away this Home Depot card. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. So what does a garage door do besides enhance your home, protect your family, and secure your vehicles? Well, when you contact the pros at Windsor Door, you'll learn how a truly high-quality garage door company can make a difference. Insulated doors, carriage-style doors, steel and custom wood, Windsor Door has them all and much, much more. And nothing makes a garage door work better than a high-quality opener. That's why the folks at Windsor Door only use LiftMaster garage door openers. And it's no wonder LiftMaster is the number one professionally installed garage door opener. Only LiftMaster has patented MyQ technology, which alerts you if you forget to close your garage door and lets you close it from anywhere, anytime with built-in Wi-Fi technology. It also has battery backup, so you can get in even when the power's out. So contact a Windsor Door dealer near you at WindsorDoor.com. 11.60 a.m. KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas, brought to you by Grapevine Antique Market. In 1866, the Grapevine Masonic Lodge is organized. J.W. Dunn is the first worshipful master. In 1867, they decide to build a school. Pine lumber is hauled by ox teams over 150 miles from the mills in East Texas. School begins in September of 1869. Colonel W.P. Bishop is principal. The school remains open until 1886. Hi, I'm Brandon Cantrell with Grapevine Antique Market. We sell vintage items, antiques, 
and a lot of current decorative items. Very cool. My husband lived here when I got married 33 years ago. It's a small town feeling, although it's not that small anymore. I've just gotten to know Grapevine and I have lots of friends here and I like it. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. Step back in time. Visit historic Grapevine, Texas today. Balance of Nature's Fruits and Veggies. I've had 10 major surgeries, including three brain surgeries. And I have extreme rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and fibromyalgia. And I wanted to let him know that his balance of nature have helped boost my immune system um, so much because I'm on injectable medications for the rheumatoid, and they mm-hmm. run your immune system. Since I've been taking balance of nature, I haven't gotten a cold, nothing. It really helped me tremendously. Good health is only a phone call away. What are you waiting for? Don't miss your opportunity to get a free month supply of Balance of Nature. Call 1-800-2468-751. That's 1-800-2468-751. Or go online to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code USA. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We've got Chris Vaughn from Hargrave Foundation on the line. We're talking foundation repair and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Do that again. Me- <laughs> Megan's helping me out here. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk, you know, um, we're talking about soil conditions. Uh, and soil conditions in our area are really really extreme from one end to the other. So if you, and what I mean by that is if you're in one end of the county, one side, the west side of the county, let's say you're in Las Colinas or Irving, really Las Colinas towards Fort Worth, towards the DFW airport, or you're in the east side of Dallas towards uh, White Rock Lake, you have extreme difference in soil conditions, the type of soil oh, yeah. that your house is built on. Absolutely. Explain that to us. It's, you know, it's when, like you said, the Los Colinas area, that's, that soil is a really volumetic. Well, when it gets wet, it wants to really, you know, it start absorbing the moisture. It, and grows, like, it grows like that volcano, oh, yeah. that volcano mm-hmm. in Hawaii right now. That's kind yeah. of what it's like. You really can. You can drive around parts of Las Colinas and, and you know, the roads are older and, and you think, okay, I know they did build these roads this way because you're just going up and down these right. big roads. Right. It's, it's really, you know, it's, it's, in, it, it's scary a lot with people that, you know, will buy homes out there and it's supposed to be a blessing to them and Next thing they know, they're having some serious foundation issues. If you go under a house in Las Colinas, and I've been under many of them, uh, unfortunately for the homeowner, usually looking for whatever problem they've got, you will see a completely different type of foundation built. The, the way they but, have to build them, they have to build them for a 18-inch soil expansion. Or a pro- That's correct. A, a projected a eighteen inch soil projection. That is that is incredible. And and Alex, what's sad about it is, is sometimes that doesn't even prevent the foundation to move. We still have to do work on some of those. That's just amazing. And now, on the other hand, if you're at the extreme other side of the county, on the east side of the county, it gets sort of sand. As you go east, it gets sandier. It gets mm-hmm. kind of uh, more ironish. That's true. That's true. We don't do quite as much work in there, even though we do. We get into the East Texas area um, and still do a tremendous amount of work in the Greenville area, for instance. We do a lot of work in there that starts getting into the sandy soils. Uh-huh. We get called out to Tyler, Texas, and do work in Tyler, and that's really sandy soil. Mm-hmm. The Metroplex is just really, the, the, the soils are just really wants to expand and contract dramatically and that's why when we get into these drought situations they can really cause a lot of problems on these homes well when this when this we have this black clay that goes right down 
I-35. And it goes from, I don't know how, I can't remember how far north, but it goes, it literally goes right down I-35 and a few miles each side of it. Mm -hmm. And you can see it on, on a geological map. It's very clear. And you can see the soil. It's, it's fascinating to look at it, actually, I think. But you it can, really is. Mm -hmm. And you can see but, you can see you you can see the problem though. You look at it, and you go, "Oh, that's the problem." And um, when it dries up, you can you know break your ankle walking through your backyard when you no, step you in can't. a crack. That's right, and you know that's one of the advantages to our product when we come out. If the house needs foundation repair, we come out, and whether we're in Las Galinas or in Tyler, Texas, at the AB Chance Steel Helical Pier is designed to go a specific load, regardless of depth. So, you know, if we're in Plano, we might hit rock fairly shallow. If we're in Las Colinas, we might have to go 25 foot. Yeah. It doesn't matter to us. The pier can just take it to where we need it to go, and that way we can give it a lifetime party. Well, yeah, I mean, your guys' pier system works good either way. It, it has a specific, mm -hmm. but I've been, you know, I you can go in a certain part of this this county, and you can hit water at 10 feet. Or you can hit rock at eight inches. It is just an, mm -hmm. insane what we run into around here, but it's always fun and challenging. Hey, I really appreciate you coming on with us and spending well, and spending you. this time with us, and um, we'll we'll uh, we'll get together soon and and do this again. And if anybody wants to get in touch with you, what who? How do they get you? Who are you? I'm Chris Vaughn, and I work with Hargrave <laughs> Foundation Repair. I've been with them for 30 years, Alex. 30 years? Really now. You're, yes, hardly, you're not they even want... 30 years old. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, yeah. If they want to get rid of me now, they're going to have to drag me out of there. They're a great organization. <laughs> Randy Hargrave is a really good guy. He, he sure he, is. He, he told me many years ago, Chris, be honest with people, it has served me well. Yeah. You can, uh, we can, we're reached at 972 442 three four one five we give free estimates and if it needs repair we'll tell you if there's something else that needs to be done we'll tell you that too again it's nine seven two four four two three four one five we sure appreciate you chris and alex, uh, alex thank you tell randy i said hi and have a fantastic weekend buddy you do the same young All man right. take care thank you pal Hey, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to put Megan to work. We're going to put her to the test. Megan is still trying to give away this reloadable project card from Home Depot. We haven't had a single call. Somebody get on the line. Ask her a question. She's trying her best, and nobody's cooperating. We have all these phone lines. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.
Your home is your castle. Whether you need a pro or just great advice, your home with Alex Guthrie. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. I am here with the one and only Meg and Carol Edwards from Ferguson Enterprises, and we are going to talk appliances. And plumbing and lighting. And plumbing and lighting and whatever whatever <laughs> Megan tells me we're going to talk about. I'm so happy to have you here today. Thank we you have we me. have been planning this for so long. You're such a busy girl. Now, you're a new mama. I am to a 10-month-old right. son. Uh, his name is RJ. He's listening out there, I think. RJ. <laughs> RJ, the man, 10 months old, and I've seen him on Facebook, and yes. he's growing like a weed. What are you feeding that boy? <laughs> uh, a variety of things. There's nothing he really won't eat. He's kind of like his mama in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. RJ looks like a fun guy. Yeah, he is pretty fun. Uh -huh. Keeps me on my toes. For sure. This segment of... Your Home with Alex Guthrie is brought to you by Windsor Door, Windsor Garage Doors, where the pros shop, windsordoor.com, www.windsordoor.com. Sorry, I kind of screwed that up, but uh, best I can do. It's okay. I'm probably going to screw lots of things up here today. <laughs> so um, we have a giveaway. Let's start out with that. We... We also have phone lines are open, and uh, the call-in number is 214-810-8255. We are going to give away the Home Depot. Well, Miss uh, Vanna Megan, <laughs> uh, why don't you tell our, our listeners what we have today? Yes, uh, Alex, it's a reloadable project card from Home Depot worth $25 there. Woof, that's all I could afford. <laughs> you know, I had to load it. That'll get you. That's all. That was my allowance for the week. That's all. I, that's all I could afford. And uh, for the and so we just need you know give us a call, ask us a question. Megan's here. If you've got a, a question about an appliance or a plumbing fixture, absolutely. Or uh, lighting or yes. hardware. And hardware. Yeah, she knows it all. Anything. She's the top dog. Well, you're not a dog. <laughs> I shouldn't call you Thanks. that. And uh, give us a call, 214-810-8255. Also, you can send a question to our Facebook Live. You can go to Your Home with Alex Guthrie on Facebook or go to alex at alexguthrie.net. You should be able to find us at either one of those. And uh, send us a question there, and if I see it, I'll read it. And I'll tell you, that's a great question. Call us. <laughs> that's why we have phones so um i have really um everybody i talk to these days we're we're so tech everything's tech 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 you know we're we're like connected to this this cell phone everything is i know my son can already scroll on the cell phone. It's scary. I mean, he just sees us doing it, and I try to hide that from him. So he doesn't have. Does he have a? He doesn't have a old. big chief pet. You don't even know what a big chief pet is. You never. You know. No, I don't. No, that's what I. I had a big chief pet crayons, but he. You didn't have that, did you? I don't think so. <laughs> Your mama was mean to you. <laughs> oh uh, no, she's pretty good to me. <laughs> no, I could tell she was good to you. So, you're. So the. You know, Jen. What a whole generation now has been raised on electronics, so you understand it. I mean, it's like second nature. You get it. And so now that you have appliances and everything in the house is sort of talking to each other and then talking to your phone, what are some of the things that you see in Let's talk about refrigerators. I'm focused on that because, you know, obviously I like to eat. And so. <laughs> and that's where it starts, right? That's, what, that, that's the problem. The refrigerator's talking back to me. Come to me. <laughs> um, what are some of the things that, that they're doing now? What are they telling us? Sure. Um, well, uh, more and more people are wanting um, built-in appliances. They want that built-in look. Um, that's not necessarily a technological thing, but it's an integrated look where they kind of want it to disappear 
or they want it to scream, hey, I'm a refrigerator and I'm pretty cool and I have this, that, and the other, being, you know, glass doors that you can see into. Uh, you know, a GE, for instance, has a Keurig uh, dispenser on the dis on the actual dispenser on the door. Um, for coffee. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to have that big, you know, Keurig That's machine cool. out on the counter. That's top. very cool. Um, you, we're also seeing, um, you know, some of the uh, brands like LG and Samsung, they are actually have cameras that are looking into what you have in your fridge. You can be at the store and you can look at a camera of your fridge and see what's in there. And what Get you might out need. of here. Yes, Get absolutely. Get out of here. So you can go. So now, you know, when you go to Walmart, they have the program that you program uh -huh. it. You, you know, you go online and you have sure. the app on your phone. Yes. And you can do, as you're walking, you can do your shopping and pri I think you can even pay for it while you're there. Oh, yeah, everything. This is insane. Yeah. And so you could actually look in your phone with a camera mm -hmm. inside your refrigerator. <laughs> Big Brother's watching and watching what you're eating. So. Oh, my gosh. Yes, and yeah. so it's like, look at the, you could look at the sell-by date on the butter. It, butter? <laughs> Yeah. You're no, eating no, no. butter. <laughs> uh, you could look at the sell by date on the butter and see if you need new butter. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is a losing battle. You understand. <laughs> now at Ferguson, we, t we sell brands of all different pricing categories. Um, we tend to pride ourselves in the high end appliances. Um, and they're kind of just getting going in this game. Uh, brands like the LG and the Samsung, they're very tech savvy, the Asian marketplace, you know, Samsung, they're doing phones and things. So um, they're at the forefront of that technology. And so, and kind of at the price point that those millennials are wanting. Um, but we're finding that millennials are driving sales and they're one of the biggest um, buyers out there. And they're also uh, influencing their parents' generation that are now remodeling their homes and, and buying second homes and things like that. Um, but you're, yes. you're telling me that they're educating us. Yeah, they are. Really? Yes. Yes. And it's uh, forced. You, it's, mom and dad it's, <laughs> you know, it's funny because we made them go to school. So now they're making us go to school. Yeah. That is just so cruel. But um, there's more <laughs> buying power out there. And um, uh, sub so again, Ferguson kind of dominating that high end uh, appliance arena. Um, something that I thought was really neat that decor is just now launching uh this year is i think it was at the kitchen and bath show uh this spring is a forty thousand dollar fridge and you ask a how, forty thousand forty thousand dollar fridge and this is does a, it do, do you drive it <laughs> you should at that price i, I would think but <laughs> reason being it is a uh, twenty thousand for that all fridge, 20000 for that all freezer, which people are wanting. Uh, everything's bigger in Texas, right? You want the all fridge, the all freezer, 36 inches, making up 72 inches of the kitchen. It's 72 inches wide. Yes. So it's like a it's like a full refrigerator, so full freezer. almost as big as a freezer. car, too. Yes. And um, what makes it so expensive is a porcelain interior that you can customize um, – to art, essentially. So all the panels and drawers within that, it can be any color you could imagine. It could be any piece of artwork you would like. So you, so you, I guess if you're going to spend forty thousand dollars on your refrigerator, I guess you're going to put your favorite recliner in front of it, <laughs> maybe with your wife's, and you're going to just make the porcelain inside the refrigerator art like you yeah. say and stare at it because 40 Limit open as you're so hot and Ab absolutely uh, why not <laughs> why not why not i know i was like do they not have a glass door on that so you could just view it all the time no so you probably plans, have a open. you take your phone and do a little click it opens by itself for well, forty thousand dollars it's funny you say that because thermidor actually has a push to open fridge now Wow. Um, so everyone has the push to open cabinets in these high-end kitchens. Right, right. And now Thermador has gotten smart and has the push to open. Mila on their dishwashers has a knock to open. Knock? Uh, yes. Like, do you do, like, knock, knock, who's there? Like, knock, <laughs> Sure, you can knock. play that game. <laughs> it probably, the kids <laughs> might have a little too much fun with that. But uh, they're, you know, getting smarter. But, 
yeah, back to that. I think um, being connected on your appliances started with diagnostics and from a service standpoint, where if something is wrong with that appliance, um, again, you call in, they're watching, they already know and can run diagnostics without having to make that trip to out to the home, figure out what's wrong, then order the part, then come back. So it kind of started from that, but then it just uh, evolved into something that, you know, we can start our appliance from, uh, you know, before you even walk into the home. Um, you can control it, it from anywhere started. in the world. Yes, yeah. from from the bedroom, you know, if right. you need that. So. Right. And that, that technology started many years ago, but ha has never, you know, it's just taken a long time to integrate into. Yeah. And we Appliances talked about this. Plumbing and lighting um, well, tend yeah. to not be all that innovative in all honesty. It takes a long time for that to to come around. Well, you have to integrate it into all of these other things. Other things first. Because you have to, you, we had it all before, but it meant the house had so many wires in it, you couldn't get through the house, sure. right? So we had all this in the, we talked about this in the 90s. Yeah. But uh, the, it, it was smarter than we were. But now, now we have wireless and we have smartphones and smart technology and it's integrated into these apply really everything. And now we can control it from a phone. Yes. Because a phone is essentially a computer. That's all it is. Yeah. Right. And I think the glory of it being uh, connected with your phone is that it can um, update mm -hmm. itself. Uh, whereas prior to that, yes, you would buy this cool new technology on an appliance, but very quickly it would be outdated mm -hmm. um, or in plumbing for that matter. And now they're getting smarter and linking it with the phone so that it has the ability to update as the phones and technology update through the years. That's uh, because this it's is, not something you want to change out all no, that often with you know no. spending well, forty thousand dollars. Okay, so <laughs> or less, but typically. so back down to reality, right? Back down <laughs> to <laughs> earth. <laughs> 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 what would a what's a a normal person is going to come in and spend what fifteen? What was a re, a regular refrigerator called? Just, let's just say I come in and sure. I buy a, a GE side by side. Yeah. Regular person can afford what is it, a twenty five hundred dollar. That would be about right for a, a freestanding or counter depth fridge, non built in. Uh -huh. uh, Yes, yeah, side by side or, 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 free, or um, French door. Okay. Mm -hmm. Has it gotten a lot better? I mean, are they, is, has anything changed? Yes. Um, the lighting for one within them is now LED. Um, so just a better, fresher lighting that makes the food actually look better uh -huh. um, in the color. And it's um, throughout the fridge, not just the front of the fridge and things hiding in the back. Uh -huh. um, Does it have a sniffer? A sniffer. Yeah, I'm tired of being the sniffer. Oh, a sniff test? No, but they have a filter within <laughs> that that purifies the air and eth ethylene gas pulls it really? out so that things last longer. Really? Um, you also get so um, it's got a so it's got a smell. It, it's got. It, <laughs> yes, it's, it's constantly purifying your air within the fridge. Well, that's most, that, that's good. Fridges. That's good because boy. I tell you what, I can use that, you know. But I, I'm really we opened it up. Uh, I need that for my son's diaper. Sadly, I've become the sniffer. It's awful. My husband just claims all, he can't all, really smell. All moms are sniffers when yeah. they've got ten month olds. Sorry, <laughs> that's how it is. And then the and then the fridges also have um, designated zones and crystal. So in the past, you just had drawers and you would put whatever you wanted in it, and uh -huh. now they have designated drawers for different. So things. they actually have. They're actually functional because. I always thought, well, it just has a name on it. I couldn't tell if it actually did anything. No, now they're actually doing, you know, one area might be cooler, add moisture into uh -huh. that that drawer. So they're smart There's drawers. Yeah. Huh, that's cool. I like that. Megan Carol Edwards is, she knows her <laughs> stuff. just call me stuff. Megan. <laughs> Megan. Megan. Megan knows her stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank She's you. also trying to give away this card. The number is 214-810-8255. Give us a call. Ask us about an appliance or something. We're looking forward to your call. We'll be right back after this break. You're listening to Your Home with Alex Guthrie. Don't go away.
Alex Guthrie here for my friends at Total Air and Heat. Did you know a typical AC unit runs enough hours in a year equal to a car running 60,000 miles? Total Air and Heat recommends that you tune your system and have it safety checked every six months to ensure peak efficiency, proper operation, and increase the life of the system. Need a new air conditioning and heating system? No problem. Total Air and Heat can replace your equipment with the best equipment on the market today. Train, and you know it's hard to stop a train. So for the best heating and air conditioning contractors in North Dallas and Plano for the past 60 years, Call my friends at Total Air and Heat, 972-881-0020. That's 972-881-0020. Or visit them online at TotalAir.com. Total Air and Heat. 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas. Brought to you by Underwood Boot Company, 530 South Main Street. 1854 saw Grapevine's first genuine civic controversy. The postal route was being established. The town needed an official name. Leonard was considered named after A.F. Leonard, who served as the postmaster, justice of the peace, and the county representative in the 12th Texas legislature. When Judge Moorhead was asked, he said, Grapevine would be a good name for our town. And it still is. I'm Anthony Underwood, Underwood Boot Company. We got a lot of tourists, a lot of local business, a lot of foot traffic. Boots are custom. They're top notch. We make everything here. Jose, my bootmaker's been doing it over 50 years. We put out a very high quality product. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. With this salute to Historic Grapevine, I'm Anthony Underwood, Underwood Boot Company. Step back in time. Visit Historic Grapevine, Texas today. Some people think the only thing worse than calling the dentist is calling the foundation repairman. That's why I recommend Hargrave Foundation Repair. Cracks in the walls? Doors that won't close? Give the folks at Hargrave Foundation a call. Now, sometimes it's not the foundation at all. That's why you need an honest, proven company. You see, understanding the soils and weather is a must for a lifetime repair. Family owned and operated since 1968, Hargrave has seen it all. Hargrave Foundation Repair is fully licensed and insured, and their staff stays up to date on all the latest techniques and advances. So call one of the last independently owned foundation companies in North Texas and the exclusive installer of the Chance Helical Pier System. Call Hargrave Foundation Repair at 972-442-3415. That's 972-442-3415. Hargrave Foundation Repair, 972-442-3415. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. We're talking appliances. Smart appliances. Artsy appliances. Expensive appliances. We're also giving away a reloadable project card from Home Depot. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to give it to the first caller. 214-810-8255, 214-810-8255. This is two weeks I've been trying to give this thing away. It's starting to, it's starting to turn yellow. I mean, it, it it's orange, but <laughs> this segment is brought to you by Total Air and Heat. We're not comfortable until you are www.totalair.com 866-450-0602. Give my friends down there a call. Um, so we kind of, I think we wore out refrigerators, <laughs> I, but it was fun. Yeah, uh, you know, hopefully for the listeners. <laughs> Well, we had fun, hey, but I'm kind of a nerd, you know, when it comes to appliances. Like, well, that's why you're here, honey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have this uh, little trailer at at the lake, and I like to go there and go fishing. And but I go there usually by myself, and I'm a I'm a dude, you know. I don't like cooking. 
I don't like making a big old, I don't like pulling out all the, you know, I'm not like my wife, my wife. I love her. She's so sweet. What do you want for dinner? I was going to do steamed vegetables and this and that. And I'm like, gosh, that's like five pans. You know, that's lots. That's me. I want one. I want one pan. I'm a one pan guy. So that's a guy thing then, because that's how it is in our home as well. Well, yeah. Pile it all in a pan. It should all fit in one pan. If it takes more than one pan, you're wasting suds to clean it. <laughs> and that's why I love induction burners, or they're not burners, induction heat, mm -hmm. induction cooktops, yeah. or single, single induction burners, what I've got. I've okay. got two of them. Look at you. And I, hey, hey, I know my, I know my stuff. So give us some, give us some information about induction because I try to explain it to people and they're like, huh? Right. Because I, all I can do is I say, well, I turn it on and water boils in 15 seconds. It does. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So induction's been out there a long time, but um, it's definitely gotten much better. So it uses magnetic fields to heat the pot and solely the pot and the food in what you're cooking. So versus gas, which isn't very energy efficient, you lose a lot of that um, into the room, that heat and energy, um, and it's not heating up your food. I know we love to cook with gas in Texas here, but um, it also makes the kitchen hot. Um, and then you have electric, and that's not all that exciting, but it is more efficient. And then you have induction. And I would say someone that does it best is, again, the Thermador Freedom Induction Range uh, that allows you to put the pot or pan, now it has to be a special it has to be a special metal. kind of pan, yeah. have special metal. Metal. And right. a lot of these companies, they'll, you know, sell, you can even go to the store, any store now, and they have them designated for induction. It's got a little emblem yes. on it that tells you now, essentially, if a magnet will stick to it, yes. an, an induction, it'll work on Which an induction. Which a lot of our pots and pans, it's the, um, the old aluminum, I think, right. that does not. Right, um, right. But just about it, or your your old cast iron ham might not, but um, everything else just about works. Um, and that freedom induction cooktop, what is so neat about that, you can put that pot or pan down anywhere on that surface, and it turns on and it senses that something's there and the exact size of it, and you can even move it around with a, in that cooking. So it follows space. it. It follows it, yeah. How cool yeah. is so that? So that's one of the better ones. So it's like having a big, giant burn in it other words you're not restricted restricted to a certain circle you know on your cooking surface. i love that that is and you can have cool. lots of things going on at the same time um and uh many brands are doing this and have adopted this the latest trend is induction ranges that didn't previously exist but uh, more and more people do like the look of a range and how it fits into their kitchen. And uh, so they come out with induction ranges now. So induction, the, it's not energy, it's not energy efficient per se as far as the amount of electricity it uses, but it's more energy efficient in the way it uses it, right? Yes, absolutely. So, so you're using all of the energy to cook the food. It's all going it's into not, that food. It's, it's not, not going out. It's not going out in the room. The, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Now you, you and can, you cook quicker, so you are using it for less time. Right. Hopefully. Well, in my case, I mean, you have to adjust because you can burn quicker too. Yeah. Oh yeah. You turn your back <laughs> on it. Uh, you do, but you can do a whole meal, you know, in fraction a fourth of the time you otherwise. You can. You can. You can burn a. You can burn water with an induction. I've done it. It's tough. Burn but water. You can, you can wow. burn water. Yeah. But, and, and it's really safe, too. What a lot of people don't realize is the heat is solely in the pot itself. So, for instance, you move that pot from that cooking surface. When we come back, we're going to continue. <laughs> okay. We're going to continue letting Megan talk about it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we'll be back after this break.
So what does a garage door do besides enhance your home, protect your family, and secure your vehicles? Well, when you contact the pros at Windsor Door, you'll learn how a truly high-quality garage door company can make a difference. Insulated doors, carriage-style doors, steel and custom wood, Windsor Door has them all and much, much more. And nothing makes a garage door work better than a high-quality opener. That's why the folks at Windsor Door only use LiftMaster garage door openers. And it's no wonder LiftMaster is the number one professionally installed garage door opener. Only LiftMaster has patented MyQ technology, which alerts you if you forget to close your garage door and lets you close it from anywhere, anytime with built-in Wi-Fi technology. It also has battery backup, so you can get in even when the power's out. So contact a Windsor Door dealer near you at windsordoor.com. You have to sell your gorgeous but suddenly unaffordable house. Now, who will buy it? These guys buy. You have to sell your mom and dad's old run-down house. Now, who will buy it? These guys buy. You have to sell your crazy Aunt Zelda's house. You know, the one with all the cats. These guys buy. Taj Mahal, these guys buy. Old Musty Dump, these guys buy. Just plain ugly, these guys buy. Sell your property now. As is, no fees, no repairs, no waiting. Theseguysbuy.com, theseguysbuy.com, theseguysbuy.com. Getting ready to go here at the Pocono Raceway. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. A racetrack unlike any other. NASCAR's best drivers tangle. Blaney goes all the way onto the apron. Kyle Busch is going to crowd him down there. On the tricky triangle. And here comes Kevin Hartnick from the third spot. The Pocono 400. 23-year-old Ryan Blaney will score his first career win. Sunday at noon on the Motor Racing Network. Don't miss the Pocono 400 tomorrow at noon on 1160 AM KBDT. Music. Welcome back to your home with Alex Guthrie. Groove it. I like that. I'm here with my friend Megan Carol Edwards. Carol was her used to be her last name. Yeah. Made for a good middle. Name. It is. It's a cool middle name. I like it. It's bold. I like that. And we're talking about kitchens and appliances and cool things like that. But first, this segment is brought to you by Windsor Door, Garage Doors, Windsor Door, where the pros go for garage doors, www.windsordoor.com. Call my boys at Windsor Door. They got it all. They got cool openers, LiftMaster. They're amazing. Um, so during the break, we're kind of discussing what we're going to talk about next. And I think that we should talk about your ultimate kit. What is the ultimate appliance package? I mean, would you cook a pizza in your, would you put a pizza oven in your kitchen? Yeah, really? absolutely. We love pizza. Um, uh huh. So that would definitely be a must. GE actually has but when one. You got, but when you get to like 50 and you got to lose 60 pounds and that pizza oven's got to go. Call a, cauliflower crust, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That sounds fun and exciting. It's just everybody needs a little cauliflower crust. Okay, whatever. Um, well, oh, that's when you're a vegan. Okay. But that's for the kids and the grandkids then to come over and enjoy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I must have really, you know, I got way off subject there. What what is your what is your ultimate kitchen appliance package? Yeah, I think um bigger is always better. So I definitely <laughs> want that 60 inch either La Cornu range, wolf range, you know, the how many two, burners 30. does that thing have? Oh, like eight. Eight burners. Yes. Good um, Lord. Or you, add a griddle or grill in there. At that point, who needs eight burners? You can kind of have fun with it. So is that a bit, that's a big wolf range? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's okay. a, the max. How many one. ovens does that thing have? Two. Is that? Two large. So that's a freestanding range. Yeah. To, well, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what a range is. Yeah. And it's got big ovens? Yes. So you could cook a goat in it? <laughs> 
Is it that sure. big? <laughs> <laughs> or a big brisket, maybe, or a big uh -huh. turkey for Thanksgiving. Or half the cow. Uh -huh. I mean, is it that yeah, big? Yeah, and all the sides. So you have the meat in one side uh -huh. and all your sides in the other. Wow. But that's not all that exciting, to be honest with you. I mean, uh -huh. I'd, I'd set that off with a really pretty hood mm -hmm. uh, above that. Or a lot of them, a lot of times now we're doing a liner so that we can do something decorative on the outside. But there's a lot more fun appliances than just the range, I think. Okay. I mean, that's kind of the heart of it. But uh, you can get really some exciting things with some built-in and some under-counter uh, products such as um, steam ovens and built-in coffee makers, built-in wine dispensers. Wine dispensers. Yes, absolutely. Decor has a built-in wine dispenser, uh, my personal favorite. Uh, <laughs> Does and it hold a keg? It holds four bottles of wines <laughs> or possibly liquor if you got really creative, I guess. Uh, and wow, that's yeah, dangerous. like on tap. That's kind of the new thing. I don't know if people have I've heard of seen the, I've seen them. I've yeah. seen them. Yeah. Um, so talking points and pieces. It's definitely for people that entertain or just have the money to spend. I guess on wine. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying to process this in, this thing where you just like it's like a Coke machine, but it's yes. it's wine. Uh huh. So you, need you to plug just... in what type of wine is in there and how many ounces it dispenses, and wow, you can truly become an alcoholic with the wine dispenser. Product. Usually, if you're going to spend the money on that, you're already an alcoholic. <laughs> well, you're, you have the wine. You're grotto just enhancing the counter wine enhancing unit or the your problem. Built -in. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay, so. We've got the range. Mm -hmm. Now the hoods, uh, I really wanted to talk about hoods because our friend Barbara was telling me about uh, Barbara Gilbert, designer. Uh -huh. I work with co her. Co-host. With she wrote me often. into this, actually. Yeah, she <laughs> so did. thank you, Barbara. <laughs> and, she, um, and she's just an amazingly talented designer. And she's been telling me about a, a venting from the, the ceiling, ceiling, which the is perimeter. totally different than anything that we've ever done venting wise before. We've always had Absolutely. the venting down close where it would hit me in the head, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, like 20 something. <laughs> sure. Inches. It's only supposed to be, yeah, the 30 to 36 yeah. inches off the cooking surface. Right. So at that point it is. So how do you get a vent all the way six feet above it and have it work? Yeah, they're actually quite powerful. I've seen it live. Um, if you get something really steaming or smoking, you can see it actually pulling uh -huh. that because that would be my question. Well, how powerful really is it? And it's kind of a perimeter um, style ventilation, either in a in a slot or in a rectangle that pulls all that air so upward it has and to it's create... hidden in the ceiling so it's yeah. great for island applications uh -huh. or um a home in my neighborhood in oak cliff and kessler park um they had windows panoramic windows all the way around and they didn't want to obstruct that view and so by putting it in the ceiling you hardly even noticed it was there but i mean when you turn it off do the do the <laughs> steak knives fall back down and yeah I mean, it's not that powerful. it's not quite that powerful no one's levitating mm -hmm. nothing's levitating napkins small child children and pets aren't being pulled up <laughs> somebody's wig yeah, I just saw that where someone attached balloons to their Pomeranian. I just couldn't stop laughing. Um, it's not like that. <laughs> um, because now, do, do, are people doing downdrafts? Yeah, anymore? I actually did one, and Best has one. That's the one I did that is um, able to go behind a range because we do sell so many ranges here. Um, and in the past, they were either integrated into your cooktop or they were a pop-up in the back, mm -hmm. but only with a cooktop. Right. And now Best actually has one um, that can go behind a range. Um, now the problem with them, the blower and everything that's in the past, the problem has been that to, to get it strong enough to get the smoke that off too. the front, it would suck the sure. flame out. Yes. I actually had a client call me up. She thought that the cooktop was broken because the she goes, I the flame doesn't work. <laughs> she and I go, we and I went in there and I go, well, turn down, turn down the wow. vent. Wow. Yeah, but seriously. And and we actually have, have with these vents, we've had to go in where we had two motors in them and we've had to disconnect one of them because they were just too oh powerful. And, and and usually it's because of noise. Yeah, you know, when you that have too. The and they are getting quieter. Yeah. Uh, Best, again, has their IQ technology that senses what you're cooking and how much ventilation is, is needed. Is that right? Yes. And uh, they it's all based on the CFM, 
don't ask me what CFM stands for, but, um, and the larger the CFM, the stronger and more powerful it's going to mm -hmm. be. And a lot of times at that higher CFM, like a 1200, 1500, it is two blowers, but that's not necessarily adding to noise. They're all competing with one another to be stronger and quieter all at the same time. So they're well, pretty good. I mean, that, that is an issue. And when you put in a 36 inch cooktop, mm -hmm. You've got a lot of heat, and it's gas. You have a whole lot of heat coming sure. up there. And so you have to have a powerful vent above it to, to handle all of that. Yeah, it's not a requirement here in Texas, but I almost won't sell a kitchen without doing a ventilation because mm -hmm. I think it is absolutely so necessary. Yeah. And so, and so you, you, we'll put double, we'll put a fan up there that's got double, double motors in it, and then we'll end up having to go back and disconnect one or whatever. It, it, that's just part of the process. Or you'll put one outside. You can put a remote fan in. Uh, but the but the downdrafts have always been a challenge because it would work in the back or some of them are in the middle of it. And you I'd know. say they come a long way. And when it comes to ventilation, you are paying for what you get. I, do, I don't believe that with all appliances necessarily, but with ventilation, it is sort of that way. But you know, a, an overhead vent, becomes a part of the design it becomes a beautiful part of it the does. kitchen too yeah and if it's built into a wall it becomes a beautiful part of the kitchen as well yes. it becomes a, a, a focal point and i've done many kitchens where we actually designed that the kitchen around that oh, it was yeah. part of what made it beautiful. It is. Yeah. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, we have uh, several brands that do custom hoods. It's become really popular on Howl's and Pinterest to see these ones with banding and mm -hmm. rivets and people want to see that and even pot rails. And um, that's really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And then we also do hood liners that are, it's a shell essentially with the working mechanisms to make that work. Right. Um, and then a designer would put their personal touch on the exterior it can be made out of whatever you could imagine mm -hmm. uh, just to sort of make it go away and be cohesive within the home. So um, we're, we're going to run out of time because we just sit here and chit chat about we, stuff. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, we're, we're just awful. <laughs> we're great, actually. Uh, let's talk about Steve ovens because you just love, you just love them. I know that is something I really wish I had. Um, not only everyone thinks of steam cooking as a healthy way of cooking and it truly is it's bringing moisture back into the food that you're cooking so it has a water reservoir and uh, most of the high-end lines now are carrying these um and you really can cook a whole meal in that steam oven at once what at once at like once. everything yeah. at and once there's no yeah mixture of flavors and things like you can do fish and you could do dessert all at the same time um you also fish vegetables dessert the put whole the thing. whole thing in there and yes cook but you can also get creative um i mean it's great at reheating I believe it kind of rejuvenates and brings back to life your old Chinese leftovers that kind of get dried out and everything or pasta, the things that get chewy if you put them in the microwave or you try to put them in the oven, they dries them out. Um, so the steam is really nice in that regard, but it also makes beautiful beef tenderloins. And a lot of people, um, the latest craze, I guess, is kind of that sous vide cooking, which is a French method of cooking where you, it's a water bath essentially for the food that locks in the flavors and the moisture within the food. And the steam is great at that and kind of holding it at a set temperature. Uh, and yeah, and just great results. Come and out so of it. It, it keeps, of course, I, I love steaming my food. I love fresh vegetables. I mm -hmm. love steaming my food. Um, um, my wife, you know, we grew up in an era where our, our parents cooked it to death. Right. If it wasn't, yes. if it wasn't really limp, it wasn't cooked enough. Yeah. Now I like mine really crunchy. I just like it warmed up and uh, actually I'll, I'll eat anything raw kind of, but my wife, you know, she likes it cooked. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You can cook just about anything. Really in them. Cooked. I mean, you can even bake cookies in them. So real. Yeah, in, in yeah, you can do, in, yeah. Brownies um, and get really great results. Do they get, do they get 
crusty? Well, they have convection built in them as well. So that is what does the browning. So most ovens nowadays have convection. Everyone's scared to use it because no recipe really calls for convection. But a lot of times the oven is adapting to it or you just lessen the temperature. So check, convection check used, when convection came out, it was like a science experiment for you. You know, you yeah, and put, I think it is still for a lot of people, but the appliance you must convert. <laughs> you must convert from 200 degrees to you know Celsius, and it was tough because yeah, it's utilizing air to make for a more even cooking, and people right. are just terrified of it for some reason. They don't. So now, are you telling me now that it will adjust it for you with convection? Yeah, a lot of the appliances kind of adapt. That's helpful. Uh, the, That's adapt helpful for you. And so um, is, what's really neat with a lot of the appliances in steam ovens and things you can put when you want the meal to be ready or the product to be ready and it will adapt for you, whether it's temperature, time, everything. Is and that it, right? Yeah. So it just, and how much convection is needed it and takes the guesswork out of it. So you that, stick it in there, the tell it appliance. what you want mm -hmm. and go read your book. Yeah, yeah. Or watch oh. or binge watch Grey's Anatomy. I think Mila was one of the first with their Master Chef. They don't even have that version any longer. But since then, other appliances like Gin Air, Decor, they have those touch screens that are kind of like your phone. Intuitive, you say what you're cooking, how you want the results to be if you're doing a tenderloin i want it medium rare and some of them even have the little picture show the doneness here's what pan what uh, shelf to put that in on and i want it done at this time and bada wow bada that's boom. incredible yes. that's incredible so we were talking about uh convection and and it kind of made me think about microwaves mm -hmm. are, are people still i mean Everybody, I everybody wants a mic. Everybody has a microwave. I mean, yeah, I don't think of, you can get around it. It may be yeah. hidden in your pantry, or um, a lot of people are doing the microwave drawers where it's kind of down low for the kids and sort of out of eyesight. Are they view. safe? Is it safe to let your kids in and out of a microwave well, like I that? I wouldn't put my kid in a microwave. Well, I mean. <laughs> You mean <laughs> you mean using the microwave, right? Yeah, we're oh yeah, they have it. They have it. Yeah. So they have, but they have a little button that says open, and then you put set the food in there. Perfectly safe. It's perfectly safe to let your kid use them. You know, not get in the microwave, but they use can't, the microwave. But they just can't as get, they always. They, okay, no, so. no I, I, they're pretty small. So the small. lesson is don't let your kids in the microwave. But or any can, appliance. Yeah, but PSA announcement right now. Don't <laughs> let your kids in your appliances, please. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a. I'm glad to know that. That's and many have locking features for that reason. I'm glad you're keeping me out of trouble today, Megan. Yes, yes. <laughs> but Always. they can't cook popcorn because it has a popcorn button. Yeah, they have a popcorn, popcorn. button. You know, they take the guesswork out. Yeah, I love, no that's what I love. popcorn. That's the I thought that's why they make microwaves. So it's for popcorn. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, more with Megan Edwards. Thank you. And appliances. Plumbing and fighting. stuff and me. We'll be right back. Don't go away. You're listening to your home with Alex Guthrie. So, what does a garage door do besides enhance your home, protect your family, and secure your vehicles? Well, when you contact the pros at Windsor Door, you'll learn how a truly high quality garage door company can make a difference. Insulated doors, carriage style doors, steel and custom wood, Windsor Door has them all and much, much more. And nothing makes a garage door work better than a high quality opener. That's why the folks at Windsor Door only use LiftMaster garage door openers. And it's no wonder LiftMaster is the number one professionally installed garage door opener. Only LiftMaster has patented MyQ technology, which alerts you if you forget to close your garage door and lets you close it from anywhere, anytime with built-in Wi-Fi technology. It also has battery backup, so you can get in even when the power's out. So contact a Windsor Door dealer near you at windsordoor.com. 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents this historic salute to Grapevine, Texas. Brought to you by Grapevine Power Sports. In 1889, the J.E. Faust store opens on Main Street. It's now Grapevine's oldest remaining brick building. Eggs sell for 10 cents per dozen. Butter is 20 cents per pound. And chickens are two fifty a dozen. I'm Aaron McWhorter with Grapevine Power Sports. When I bought the dealership, I came in to buy a four-wheeler. They were a freestanding Kawasaki dealership. And I said, Dennis, I don't mean to pry. Are you interested in selling this place? And he said, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but we're fixing to put it on the market. And I said, Dennis, I'll take it. 
In the last three years, we've done 60% increase. The mayor is a customer of mine. The city manager is a customer of mine. A lot of friends that live here still. The small town feel right in the middle of the big metroplex. Grapevine, Texas, a world festival and event city. Find out more about Grapevine by going to www.grapevinetexas.gov. Step back in time. Visit historic Grapevine, Texas today. When I say Italy, what comes to mind? Venice. Capri. Oh my gosh, Capri was marvelous. The views, the cliffside views, or traveling to Sorrento. Pirello Tours. Oh, Pirello Tours, for sure. Pirello. Hi, I'm Steve Pirello of Pirello Tours. With over 70 years of tour experience to Italy, it's no wonder Pirello Tours is synonymous with travel to Italy. I think of the culture. And to walk up to certain areas and touch a wall and think, well, this wall is like 3,000 years old. Being on a Pirello Tour on our anniversary was better than anything I can remember ever on an anniversary. I personally approve every itinerary to ensure a stress-free, once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Salute! Call now for your free insider's guide to Perillo's Italy. Call in the next 30 minutes and qualify for a $100 gift card when you travel with us. Call 800-547-6018. 800-547-6018. Welcome back to the last segment of your home with Alex Guthrie with my very good friend Megan Edwards. This has been so much fun. We are just we are a rocket good appliance team. And um, we were uh, we were talking about uh, not actually the kids getting in the microwave. I didn't really want them to do that. But one of the things that uh, comes up a lot of times when we're talking about designing kitchens is the height of microwaves. That always comes up, and that's actually why I brought that up. Um, because I've always been a little bit leery of putting a microwave down low only because you can pull hot water or something out of it and actually spill it. And it, sure. And I always thought that was a little bit dangerous. Am I wrong? No, it definitely is dangerous. <laughs> There's definitely a happy medium of where to locate that microwave. But in those microwave drawers that are under a counter, they pull out. It truly is a drawer that pulls out. So you're lifting up. It's not a door. So you're that talking stays. about a microwave drawer. Yeah, yes. that's very, that's true. If you put it down low, that would yeah. be yeah. my recommendation. And those, it, it's kind of a neat yeah. Talking point, walk up, hit the button, and it opens like very oh, slowly. Oh, wow. Set something down yeah. in. So, yeah. And, I, and I've, now I've also done dishwasher drawers. Uh-huh. And they're cool for certain things. Yeah, kind of know? that same approach, setting something mm-hmm. down in, and you have the two separate drawers. So we've designed kitchens where we have, a as an alternate appliance, a dishwasher drawer. For instance, we mm-hmm. I've done a kitchen where we had – we designed it where we had a portion of it just for the kids, where you would have a refrigerator drawer so the kids mm-hmm. could come in and have don't have to run in there get under mom, and they could get their they could have the drawer that had their drinks in it. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, she also I had a single lady, and she didn't want she had a full size dishwasher. But she also wanted a dishwasher drawer because she had one or two plates. I mean, she just didn't have a lot. Yeah, it took a while to fill it up. Yeah, Um, yeah. So I hope you've had a lot of fun. I have today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so great having you. (laughs) It's always, it's always, yeah, it's always good when you have fun. It should fly by. My paper all fell apart here. Oh, no. Um, And so tell everybody how to get in touch with you. Sure. So um, again, the company is Ferguson Enterprises. We're a wholesale distributor for plumbing, appliances, and lighting. Uh, today, in fact, you can visit one of our showrooms. We have four area showrooms. Uh, so come visit us 10 to 5. Keep those folks company that are working today. Thank you, guys. Um, we're also open uh, 
during the work week, uh, nine to five. So our showrooms being our latest and greatest in Frisco out there uh, near Stonebriar. We also have one in Dallas in the design district, not far from where we are today, uh, Fort Worth and Grapevine. But Ferguson is a nationwide company. Um, so you can visit us on shop.ferguson.com and view kind of a, a wide variety of our, prod, our products that we offer. Um, and you can also call locally at 817 817- Five four zero one eight eight eight, and talk to an expert today. And how do they get in touch with Megan? Megan, Edwards. yeah, the elusive Megan. Uh, I'm an outside sales rep, so I'm calling uh, typically on the trade, and I go to projects that, that you. So you're doing not like you, you. Okay, so that in other words, don't call Megan. No, you She'll can call, call that you. number, and you can ask for me, and they will get you in <laughs> touch. But I can I can give out my cell nine seven two five eight nine seven zero two eight. Call, text me, anytime. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. been so much fun really today. And I really appreciate you being here. And thank you to Megan Carol Edwards. And thank you, Chris Vaughn with Hargrave Foundation. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Phil Brown, the best producer today, top of the line, the executive producer today. Thank you to my crack research team, Mrs. Guthrie. And thanks to our sponsors. Most of all, thanks to our listeners and our Facebook followers. We've had a great crowd today, haven't we? Great. I'm glad I didn't scare anybody off. uh, You didn't scare anybody (laughs) off. In fact, your mom's here. Is your husband on there anywhere? I'm not sure. We we have had. just shut down Facebook. We have have had a, a great crowd today. Thank you, everybody on Facebook that joined us. It's been a really lively show. Be kind to each other. And show a stranger some love. We need more of that. And also check your neighbors during this during this heat oh. spell. And if you see a dog, uh, an animal oh out there that's in distress, you know what? They may not be rabid or anything. They may be thirsty. They may be dehydrated. Give them some water. If you see a guy, a person sleeping on a sidewalk, go in 7-Eleven, get a bottle of water, stick it next to him. I've done that before. It's a great thing to do. You see a person on the corner uh, panhandling for money. You know what? If you don't want to give money, fine. Give them a bottle of water. Right now, we need to be kind to each other. If you have elderly neighbors, check them and make sure they've got air conditioning. Make sure that they're healthy and hydrated. Let's all show a stranger some love. Right now, we need it really bad. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Next week, we're going to have LED lighting. We're going to have um, our friends from uh, Lights Fantastic here. That show will be expanding. I don't know who else will be here, but I'm sure someone will be because I'm going to invite someone. (laughs) Um, It's been a wonderful show. It's been a wonderful week. And I hope you have a wonderful week next week. And until then, this is Alex Guthrie, and I'm signing off. You've been listening to Your Home with Alex Guthrie.